The Joint Strike Fighter program was conceived, designed and developed for a truly 21st century war doctrine called network-centric warfare. The F-35 program is infamous for its cost overruns. It has been touted as the most expensive defense program in the history of the United States, in fact, ever in the world. There are a handful of critical reasons as to why this program has become the most expensive in the world. Of them all is something you would not immediately think of when it comes to stealth fighter jets, the software. As of January 26, 2022, the Bloomberg reported that a software upgrade costing over $14 billion was deployed to a fleet of aircraft despite known flaws. In this video, we are not going to assess any of the hardware-related criticisms that are normally directed towards this aircraft. Instead, we are going to give you a unique perspective you probably never had about this program in terms of its software, the soul of this fighter. Welcome to Tech Byte. There is no exaggeration in saying the F-35 is defined by its software as much as it is by its hardware. When you talk about this fighter jet, you cannot talk without talking about the war doctrine that was designed to serve for. For the main contractor of the program, Lockheed Martin, achieving stealth is not new. Lockheed, in fact, designed and developed the first ever stealth aircraft around 40 years back. So the stealth capabilities in this aircraft are only evolutionary. However, the sensor suite and most importantly the software that powers them is what makes this war machine a fighter jet that was conceived, designed and developed for a truly 21st century war doctrine called network-centric warfare. The network-centric warfare was pioneered in the early 90s by the Department of Defense. This doctrine theorizes that in a war, a party with information advantage is going to have a competitive advantage over the opponent. Central to this doctrine is how geographically well-dispersed forces and centers of commands are enabled to have this information advantage through information technology and robust computer networking backbone. To this effect, Department of Defense has defined, developed and manages a vast, globalized, closed information networks and processes, widely referred to as Global Information Grid, GIG in short. As this doctrine was being implemented in the early 2000s, the JSF program was also taking its roots. As such, there should be no surprises to realize that this JSF program also was going to fall in line with the same vision. JSF was designed from the ground up to provide information fusion, that is to combine data from various sensors and provide a unified battle awareness to the pilot, plane and other command and control nodes. The modern aircrafts are practically flying computers. It should not come as a surprise that the foremost fighting machine of the 21st century is going to be any different. So what sort of softwares are normally associated with an aircraft and a fighter jet in specific? There are many, but here are the main ones. First one, the flight control systems. The primary function of the system is to provide a redundant fly-by-wire channels to control the aircraft within its safe flight envelope. Then, the second one is the mission control systems. Primary function of this system is to help the pilot achieve the mission goals. The third one is the weapon control system. Primary function of this system is to integrate with various supported weapons platforms and deploy them in a mission execution. The fourth one, a digital engine control systems. Primary function of this system is to provide a digital interface to command and optimize engines for their throttle to thrust performance. Fifth one is a flight safety system. These systems include de-icing systems and flight control system and many other systems. The sixth one is radar and other sensor control system. These are the systems that control various sensor suites on a fighter jet, such as infrared cameras, electro-optical sensors, etc. The seventh one is onboard statistic systems. These are housekeeping systems that continuously collects onboard performance and fault data to be either transmitted in real time time to a ground maintenance center or to be downloaded when the aircraft finally lands on the ground. Eighth one is an onboard weapons control system. No modern weapons are without software these days. These are pieces of software run on the weapon itself and stays in communication with the mission control system throughout its deployment time. The types of software run on a fighter jet are termed as real-time systems. Needless to say, they are incredibly complex. Softwares on an F-35 are exceptionally complex. Let's understand why. The real-time systems are software and hardware systems that are subject to real-time constraints. That is, their response to an event should be in real time. And often, their response times are calculated in nano or microseconds. These software applications are built to interact and control the underlying hardwares all the way to flight control surfaces and weapon systems via two different channels, so to speak. As an application running in a real-time operating system, RTOS in short, 
or as a purpose-built embedded systems. All of the softwares, including real-time softwares, has many layers. If we take a vertical view of a software running on a fighter jet, it looks like this. This view is important to understand the complexities, cost overruns, and program delays that plagues the F-35 program. Much of the teen series fighter jets such as F-16 and F-18 had these sorts of software systems too. To understand how the F-35 is different, you need to go back to the doctrine. F-35 tries to integrate these various systems and fuse the data from each of these systems to provide a single unified battle awareness view for the pilot. It is much harder to achieve than said. There are many reasons behind it. Some of them are due to inherent engineering challenges. Some of them are due to very nature of the sector where this software is developed, the military. And some of them are just simply missteps. Firstly, the JSF program adopted a development strategy called concurrency. This has got nothing to do with the concurrency in software system, but rather a strategy to build various platforms in production while some of the systems are still on the drawing board. The intention behind adapting that was to reduce the cost and time, but what happened was the opposite. Late design changes in some systems then affected the systems that were already in the production, causing redesigns and redevelopment. Secondly, JSF wanted to use a single fighter jet program to serve three different branches of defense, Army, Navy and Air Force, all of which have had different mission parameters and feature requests. Providing the pilot with better awareness was just one piece, achieving information fusion across various commands, control and intelligent nodes in a mission that spans across all three branches of the defense and offense, was the ultimate goal and the primary reason why DoD opted for a single platform. This resulted in continuous iterations of design and development based on competing interest and feedback from these three different branches of DoD. Combined with the concurrence concept, it just simply added one extra layer of complexity. Thirdly, just sheer number of first ever type innovations. For example, F-35 helmet is central to achieving information fusion for the pilot. The software and hardware behind this is one of the most expensive pieces of systems developed for F-35 program. Finally, the sector where these systems are developed post unique constraints. Access to commercial platforms, operating systems, system libraries and other resources were not readily available. Extreme vetting for the software professional meant the scaling resource was cumbersome. Backward compatibility requirements meant some of the systems used in F-22s were reused. All of these brought over legacy systems and frameworks that are not on par with the modern, highly distributed, fault-tolerant architectures and frameworks resulted in performance impact and suboptimal throughput. Software libraries are reusable pieces of software that software developers use to create more complex systems, like a building blocks. What actual libraries are used is not available in the public domain. We can however guess that they are going to be very custom made and proprietary source code of Lockheed Martin. However, there are some public information that can shed some light into the overall technology stack being used. Primary programming languages of the systems are understood to be C and C++. Given the real-time nature of the systems involved, it is not not surprising. Both of these programming languages have been in the industry for a very long time and likely Lockheed Martin would have developed many system level libraries for them. But these programming languages are notorious for memory management issues and maintenance headaches. Commercial software industry mitigates these risks by adopting best design patterns and development practices. However, C, for example, is limited to C way of writing programs. It is also known that a good amount of ADA code is present. This is understood to have been ported across from F20 program as legacy code. The real-time operating system, RTOS in short, is likely the Integrity 178TUMP from Green Hills. This RTOS supports ARM processors on field programmable gate arrays, FPGA in short, that are crucial for signal processing and data fusion. Other commercial alternatives in the industry are VXWorks RTOS from Wind River. It is not certain if these systems are leveraging bare metal hypervisors for running these RTOSs. If they do, it is likely to help them with agile practices being introduced into the program. One of the trends in the commercial world is to leverage specially modified Linux microkernels on the Intel platform to achieve real-time signal processing requirements, such as radar signal processing. One of the recommendations in the industry to achieve resilience is to leverage such systems for signal processing and reduce as many processes running on RTOS as possible. All of the previously discussed reasons affected different layers of the software 
software and its development. Ongoing development of F-35 specific weapon system resulted in continuous changes to their onboard weapon systems and provided interfaces. That in turn caused changes in how they are integrated with weapon control systems, mission control systems, and ground support system and others. F-35 program also develops a ground support system called Autonomic Logistics and Information System, ALIS in short. Though it is a ground-based system, without the system, F-35 cannot achieve initial operational capability and without its full maturity, F-35 cannot achieve full operational capability. Just to put all of this into perspective, there are estimated to be over 24 million lines of code and counting in all of the softwares running on an F-35 program. This was an increase of over 9 million code from from initial estimates. Compare this to F-16 in 1974, which had about 135,000 lines of code, and the F-22 Raptor in 1997, which had about 1.7 million lines of code. As per some initial estimates, the helmet alone, which is a man-machine interface for data fusion, had about 8 million lines of codes. Aviation Today reports as following. One of those sensors is the AN forward slash AAQ-37 distributed aperture system, DAS in short, produced by North Grumman. It uses six electro-optical sensors that operate in the mid-wave infrared spectrum to provide a 360-degree view around the plane in an attempt to maximize situational awareness. It aids in the missile and launch point detection, and its cameras are integral to the helmet-mounted display system, or HMDS in short, and its ability to let the pilot see through the plane. If you are interested to know more about the manned mission interfaces, please do check out our dedicated video on this topic on our channel. The JSF program considers the software as the top technical risk to the F-35 program. In line of the program delays and cost overruns, DOD and Lockheed Martin agreed to certain process changes and introduced what they termed as continuous capability development and delivery strategies, C2D2 in short. In other words, they are going for an agile methodology for development and releases. It is not a revolutionary approach, nor is it a silver bullet. Agile practices in fact can be counterproductive if required culture or ecosystems do not exist. My gut feeling is this is not going to yield any significant differences. Lockheed Martin also appears to bring in the best practices found in the commercial industries such as GitOps and Secure DevOps for improving code quality and to manage its continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines. F-35 software releases are done in incremental scopes called blocks. Recent Block 3 upgrade came along with a bill of around $14 billion. The upcoming Block 4 release is introducing even more novel weapons platforms. This means the complexity of integration is going to be even harder. So is it all worth it? The short answer is yes. You need to take a bigger picture into account. If network-centric warfare is the doctrine of the future, then the goal must be achieved by any means. It is not to say unnecessary cost overruns are acceptable, but rather it is equally important to acknowledge the complexity of the effort behind. Software development, until AI takes over for that matter, is going to be a human-driven development activity that makes it most complex engineering task. Among all the engineering fields, it makes software development a more unique practice. That complexity is not easy to remove. Hopefully, this video helps you appreciate this complex and beautiful machine in terms of the line of codes that makes it alive.